Hello, my name is Gabriel Urbain. I come from the University of Ghent. And in this video, I will present you my work about a robotics module for stent control, inspired by the cerebellum to stabilize reflex-based locomotion conducted on the high-Q robot. So the goal of this work is to inspire from biological evidence about the cerebellum and its role during locomotion and translate it to a robotic system and see if we can validate the hypothesis and the observations in biology, but also find a new way of better locomotion in robotics. And to do that, we started from three main hypotheses. The first one is that there is uh, an evidence of the, a descending pathway from the cerebellum through the spinal cord uh, during locomotion. That has, will, has been well documented in uh, the works I provide here. The second hypothesis, which is the crucial hypothesis in this work, is the belief that there is spatial temporal representation in the cerebellum to predict the stance and the posture during locomotion. So in a way, it's, it's not relying on sensory feedback coming from the, uh, the lower limb, but from a higher level signal from the brain saying, okay, uh, this, the posture during locomotion should be like this or like that as desired. And finally, there have been some work in simulation showing that locomotion can be completely achieved in a closed loop way using ground reaction forces from uh, the feet to do reflect-based locomotion. So we wanted to combine those different pieces of evidence from the cerebellum and from closed loop locomotion in a reflex-based mode together in, in a robotics architecture. And to do that, we arrived at the following architecture. So as you can see, there are many layers of it, and they correspond to some biological counterparts. I will try to go through uh, the most important modules of this architecture and do the link with the biology when editing. So to start with, we have conducted our experiment on the HiQ robot hosted at IIT. As you can see on this picture, we have both uh, applied our algorithm first on the simulation model, but also translated them to the real robot that you see on the left. This robot is virtually compliant in the sense that it implements uh, an active compliance module. Basically, this is a PD joint controller that controls the torques of the hydraulic, hydraulically actuated joints in here. If we have a look at uh, the, the control loop and we do a few simplification, we can assume that the equation is equivalent to a virtual spring damper system uh, that would be applied on the joint itself. So tuning the gain and the gain of the controller, uh, we can tune therefore the virtual spring stiffness and damping. As I told you, we inspired from closed loop locomotion. So we made our algorithm rely only on ground reaction forces that are processed into a memory buffer and then a neural network. This neural network predicts directly to join uh, position and velocity. So it's completely an end-to-end -end neural network uh, framework. To train this neural network, we rely on a supervised algorithm uh, called FORCE. So we need the target signal. And in this case, we have used the reactive controller framework, which is documented here if you want to know more to produce this target signal for the join reference. Here I display uh, the most important part of the reactive uh, controller framework. We deactivate, deactivated most of them to only keep uh, two, uh, two main modules. The first one is the generation of a trajectory in the, the body reference. And then uh, we have the inverse kinematics to transform it to the join reference. As you can see, it depends on two main inputs, the clock and the rigid body model. In our work, our goal is not to reproduce completely the dynamics of the reactive controller framework. Uh, as you can see, we're not using the same inputs. But the goal is really to show and demonstrate that closed loop locomotion can be realized on a real robot, not only in simulation, and that it needs an external uh, stabilization. So it makes sense that those inputs are quite different from the neural network. And so finally, the most important part here is the trend controller. 
uh, it helps to stabilize the body by keeping it horizontal to the ground at each moment. But to do that, it needs to know which foot is in contact with the ground to be able to apply torque on those foot and then regulate the attitude of the body. This knowledge of the contact with the ground can be either predictive, so we, we know the desired stance and the desired foot in contact with the ground. Uh, this is illustrated in the predictive stance estimator or PSC that I show on the left. Either it can be reactive. So here, uh, this knowledge emerged from uh, real sensor information taken in the feet. There is a paper in biology uh, where uh, this hypothesis of having a predictive or reactive stance estimator has been actually assessed on patients with and without ataxia, cerebellar ataxia, and showing that the most uh, plausible solution is actually the first one. But we wanted to reproduce this, and this is the results. Uh, we conducted 12 trials, six with RSC, six with PSC. As you can see on this graph, on the x-axis, we have the time, and we are first training the neural network to reproduce the targets, then progressively incorporating its contribution to, in the end, finally only have a closed loop system where only the neural network is controlling the joint, which in turn are giving some sensor information via the ground reaction forces. So starting from 150 seconds, the system is fully closed loop. And we apply some disturbances around here. And we see that the RSC, uh, the RSC uh, estimator leads to um, systems that are not robust against disturbance, where PSC always leads to uh, robustness in this case. It's not a quantitative uh, study, but more qualitatively, we can see that the same uh, conclusion is in biology happens here. This is another representation of the same, uh, the same conclusion. On the bottom part, you can see uh, the RSC estimator, and the upper part, the PSC estimator. You see that if you represent the limit cycle in the knee flexion extension joint position and hip flexion extension joint position, we have a good attractor if we are using an external stabilization module like using PSC. But this attractor actually diverges either to chaotic behavior, either to a steady state if you are using RSC. In one situation, we observed that the robot could, along the full trial, keep a stable, um, stable gate with RSC. However, the phase between the target and the prediction signal actually started to diverge. So if we compare to the normal PSC signal, where the target of uh, the foot position is actually the same as the prediction, in this trial that I'm mentioning, we have seen that the phase is actually shifting a long time, which means that the frequency of locomotion is different from what uh, the system has been planned for. And this effect is quite interesting because um, in patients with ataxia, we know that when this disease happens, uh, the frequency of the gait can be affected by the problem of ataxia. So we believe that this can be in, uh, can provide some information about uh, why this would happen in this case and not in normal patients. So to conclude uh, this short presentation, first we have demonstrated that we can have closed loop robotic system achieving end-to-end -end, uh, locomotion using a neural network. To our knowledge, most work has been done in simulation, but there are not a lot done on real robot, especially for locomotion. However, a stability controller were crucial in our framework, and the stability controller relies on timing predictive information to lead to robust gist against disturbances. This is actually in line with some biological evidence about the cerebral. If you want to know more, I invite you to consult those references. And uh, if you have any question, I will be glad to talk with you in any way that is made up to our disposal during this conference. Thank you very much.